thermal equation of the state and today we'll be talking about the non ideal uh, thermal equation of the state and of and in a later lecture we'll be talking about the tabular form of the properties of the uh, substance of our property of the pure substance so in the last lecture we we had uh, ideal thermal equation of the state um, but ideal gas law uh, itself is not a good predictor of PV T B behavior when we are talking about the gases and which are the gases which are at the high enough density. So when we have got the gases at the high density, there is some molecular interaction uh, forces between them. And when we have got the molecular interaction between them, there is the behavior, uh, uh, let's say a behavior between pressure and volume that is definitely not the same. Uh, and that is behaving like deviating from the Boyle's law. Uh, so this happened and this normally happened near the vapor dome. Um, again, if we have got a high temperature, so that high temperature induced the molecular disassociation. And when we are talking about the molecular disassociation, let's say, for example, talking about the nitrogen and we are talking about the nitrogen and nitrogen in a, as a diatomic nitrogen. Uh, so if this it disassociate, that means like it will be an, uh, a monatomic particle. And obviously the monatomic nitrogen behavior will not be same as the uh, diatomic particle. So obviously there will be some difference in the behavior of those gases. So the alternative approach towards the predicting the non-ideal, uh, the behavior of the gases, or what we say like the real uh, uh, behavior of the real gases, we have got some uh, correct thermal equation of the state and we are talking about the uh, the equation of the state now the first equation of the state is the uh, van der waal equation and it is again the same equation of the state of the fluid com composed of particle that have got the non-zero volume and there is some pairwise attraction forces between the particles um, make sure like when we are talking about the ideal we are not talking about the attractive or repulsive footing between the particles. Uh, it was derived by um, Van der Waal in 1873 and got a Nobel Prize in 1910 for his work on the equation of the state for the gases and liquid. Uh, this equation itself is the based on the modification of the ideal gas law and it approximates the behavior of the real gas so make sure again we have got the word approximate but yes we are talking about the real fluid right now um, as i said like when we are talking about the uh, the uh, pairwise attraction forces or repulsion forces between the partic particles so we are I'll deviating from the boys law so that means like behavior will be not like this or the pressure would not be proportional to one over v so we are talking about the change in the pressure uh, with respect to different chain in pre pressure, uh, different chain in volume with respect to pressure. So that will be non-ideal. So it is actually the modification of the ideal gas. So obviously the behavior of the pressure and volume uh, is different now. So the red, uh, the, the, sorry, the Van der Waal equation is some, something like this. So P is equal to RT by V minus B minus A by V square. So so in that case, A and B are the variables we need to be um, calculated. Uh, but make sure, like, let's check this one. We have got TC right now in this equation, and we have got the PC right now in the equation. That means that we have got the critical temperature and critical pressure. So in the above uh, statement, we say, like, uh, when we are talking about the behavior um, near the vapor dome, uh, if I'm saying, like, near the critical point, so we are talking about the non-ideal behavior. So now the, the, the Van der Waal equation, now it can approximate the behavior of the real gases near the buffer dome or near the critical point. The next modification of the ideal gas is the Redlin-Kong equation. Uh, again, Redlin-Kong equation is the empirical and algebraic equation that relate between the temperature, pressure, and volume. Uh, but it is generally more accurate than the Van der Waal equation uh, and that is near the above the 
uh, uh, of the ideal gas equation and that is above the critical temperature. Uh, it was formulated by the Rednick and uh, Joseph Kong in 1949. Uh, again, it says it is undergone many revision, many modification in either to improve it accuracy or in either to have a better simulating condition near the uh, lower temperature or just talking about the lower temperature, uh, which is actually near the uh, vapor liquid equilibrium or talking about the including the lag, uh, vapor liquid equilibrium as well. Uh, again, we have got the equation which is equal to PV by RT by V minus B minus A something. Um, if you can check the equation from above or compare the equation with the van der Waal, it's a little bit getting more complicated now. So just uh, having said that, like we're just saying like, um, Reddick Kong equation is more, probably say like complex than the van der Waal equation, but it is more accurate than the uh, van der Waal equation. So that means like if you are if you are talking about more accuracy towards the real gases, we will be talking about more complexity in the equation. So the, the simplest equation is equal to PV is equal to RT. Sorry for that. So PV is equal to RT. That means like uh, if we are talking about the simple equation, we are talking about the ideal condition, uh, condition which mean we, we, we would be like having some uh, constraint on it. But if you are talking about the more accuracy, so we would be talking about the more complexity in equation. Now, talking about another method rather than the thermal equation of the state, and that is the compressibility factor. Uh, going back towards the ideal gas equation again. So ideal gas equation PV is equal to RT. So that means like it is would be predicting the ideality of the, 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 the gases. But let, let me modify this equation a little bit more, and that is PV is equal to ZRT. So that means like if the value of Z is one, so we are talking about the behavior, which is ideal behavior. But if the value of the equation Z is greater than one or Z is less than one, so that means like it is the, it will be deviating from the ideal gas or ideal behavior. So Z, if I say like Z is equal to PV by RT. So this is what we call it as the compressibility factor. So compressibility factor is the deviation from the ideality of the gases measured by Z is equal to PV by RT. Uh, we will be looking at the compressibility chart and we will be looking at the, uh, the nitrogen compressibility chart to understand this compressibility factor. Uh, so the plot is uh, the, the graph is plotted between the Z, uh, which is Z is equal to PV by RT and pressure and pressure is changing from this direction. And this is the compressibility chart of the nitrogen. Uh, we are talking about the different pressure and we're talking about the different temperature. So we have got the increasing temperature from this direction to this direction. And we are having an increasing, uh, increasing um, pressure from uh, in this direction. Um, Z would be equal to one on this line and Z would be less than one if you are talking about the, this, 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 uh, this direction. And Z would be greater than one if you are talking about this direction. So let's have a, a look at uh, or any of the conditions, let's say. So let's say a condition we say like, if you are approaching towards zero pressure. So for all the temperature, if I'm talking about the all the temperature lines, if you can check the, these lines as well. So if my pressure P is approaching towards one, so that mean like my Z is approaching towards one as well. So in that case, if I'm if I'm saying like, if the pressure is minimum, Z would be approaching towards one, or the the, the behavior of the gases would be ideal. Now let's have uh, another example. Let's say uh, and let's say like if I'm uh, let's have a pressure 
uh, above the critical point and let's have a pressure with, uh, uh, at uh, 10 megapascal. But the temperature, if having increased pressure, but also the temperature is increased. That means like increased than uh, 300 Kelvin. So that means like even if my pressure is increased, but my temperature is also increased or more than 300 degrees centigrade. So you can imagine like this line is approaching towards one now. So for that mean, if the temperature is greater than 300, Z would be approaching towards one, even if the pressure is, uh, but sorry, the keeping the pressure less than 10 megapascal, but still above the critical point. So that mean like the behavior will be still ideal. If you're talking about the high pressure, high temperature and uh, and sorry the if you're talking about the high pressure and we are talking about the high temperature the behavior will be still ideal now let's say a hold uh, pressure at 4 megapascal so we are talking about a pressure which is somewhere near wapper dome let's say um, but let's say decrease the temperature so having a pressure of 4 megapascal but the temperature is actually lower than 300 Kelvin or getting the temperature lower than 300 Kelvin now. So if I'm saying like now, the Z would be less than one now. So that means like if I'm having a pressure of 400 megapascal near somewhere up a critical point and the temperature is less than uh, 300 Kelvin, so Z would be less than one. So in that case, if I'm saying like Z is equal to PV by RT, remember like V is equal to volume per unit mass. So that means like mass per unit volume is density. So that means P would be equal to rho RT. So that give us a relationship between the, the compressibility factor Z and the density. So in, from this thing, it's it's a like if Z is lower, getting lower, so that means like the density would be increasing. So if density is increasing, so ultimately it's say like if there would be some attractive forces between the molecule, so that it would increase the density. So if I'm decreasing the compressibility factor, it will increase the density by attracting or by by the molecule which would be attracting itself. Now, let's say if I'm talking about the pressure, which is, let's say, above the 30 megapascal, somewhere near 30 megapascal. So let's say for all the temperature right now, because if you can check it, like all the temperature lines are moving upward. So for all the temperature, uh, if I'm increasing the pressure for all the temperature lines or the, for the all the temperature, Z is greater than one now so you can imagine like now we are talking about this thing so now so z is greater than one if z is greater than one so there would be a wise repulsive forces between the particles so if you say like if you are still applying a pressure on the on the gases the gases will be actually repe repelling each other so when you are they repelling it each uh, each other so that man mean like the pressure would be greater the change in volume would be less so there would be difference in P and V now. So this is the generalized compressibility chart can be developed by the generalized, um, generalized gases. But for the specific, you can imagine like this was the specific one. Uh, 